In March this year, around 30,000 people in Ladakh decided they were done being ignored. That's more than 10% of the region's population rallying together to demand their rights. And trust me, this was no casual weekend gathering. Now you might think 30,000, that's not a big deal. But picture 10% of your city taking to the streets. It'd be a national news. Instead, it's as if the media is playing hide and seek with the story. Selective coverage. Anyone? Here enters Sonung Mangchuk, educator, innovator, and all-round hero of the scene. When talks with the government fell flat, he took matters into his own hands by going on an indefinite fast. That's right, 21 days without food, just to make sure Ladakh's voice wouldn't be silenced by corporate interests. Today, on the 6th of March, I will be sitting on fast unto death, which will happen in stages. I will not eat until we are heard. Now that's a commitment. So what's at stake? Oh, just minor things like democracy, environmental rights, and not being bulldozed by corporate greed. The protesters have four main demands. Let's break them down. Demand one, inclusion in sixth schedule of the constitution. This would essentially give Ladakh protection from outside exploitation, allowing tribal areas to govern their own affairs. Demand two is for full statehood of Ladakh. They're seeking to move from union territory to state status. Demand three says two MPs instead of one. Currently, Ladakh has only one MP representing its two districts, Leh and Kargil. And last, demand four, a dedicated public service commission to ensure local job security. But this isn't just a Ladakh issue. The story echoes in places like Hasteo, Manipur and Uttarkashi. Our environment is being treated like a clearance sale. Everything must go. If we don't take stand now, soon, we'll have nothing left but corporate leftovers. And let's not forget the beauty of Ladakh. It's not just all about mountains and valleys. It's a home to rare species and a culture that draws tourists from all over the world. So why the government's foot dragging? Oh right, the political corporate mafia. Because what's a quick bug if it doesn't come at the expense of a community? After months of protest with no real response from the government, Wang Chuk had no choice but to escalate the fight. Abhi jo sarkar hai, wo ek tarah se ek pagal hathi ki tarah bartav kar rahi hai. Unhe na Bharat ki suraksha ka fikr hai, na yahan ke logon ke mushkilaton ka ya unke man ko jo thes mounchegi, unka fikr hai. Unhe sirf fikr yeh lag raha hai hume to. कि उन्हें फिक्र है कि इसका भारत के चुनाव पर ना फर्क पड़े उनके वोटों पर ना फर्क पड़े किसी भी कीमत पर चाहे शांति चली जाए या हिंसा हो सीमा से जाने से इन्हें रोका जाए तो ओवर 100 वॉलंटियर्स लेड बाय हिम हैव एम्बार्क्ड ऑन अ मंथ लॉन्ग 1000 किलोमीटर फुट मार्च टू दिल्ली एमिंग टू रीओपन नेगोशिएशंस बिटवीन लद्दाख्स लीडरशिप एंड द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट this march, the Delhi Chalo Padyatra, organized by Lay Apex Body and the Kargil Democratic Alliance, seeks to reignite a movement that has been simmering over for four years. When Ladakh became a union territory after the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act in 2019, there was initial optimism. But without its own legislature, that optimism quickly turned into skepticism. With over 97% of Ladakh's population belonging to scheduled tribes, inclusion in the sixth schedule has become essential for them to protect their land, culture and environment. Other demands include establishing a dedicated public service commission to streamline local job recruitment and securing two Lok Sabha seats, one for each district. Right now, Ladakh only has one MP representative. Earlier this year, Wang Chuk led a 21-day hunger strike, but despite his sacrifice, talks with the government remain deadlocked. The Delhi Chalo Padyatra is set to conclude at Rajghat on October 2nd in the hope that Ladakh's voice will finally be heard. With elections being held in Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakhis are closely watching how the government responds to their demands. The future of Ladakh hinges on these negotiations as its people fight to secure their rights and protect their homeland. Thank you for watching and for more updates, stay tuned to the Savera.